Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how you can remove any object from your photo using Photoshop 2020 and we're going to start right now. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is James and if it's the very first time to this channel and you want to learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So today guys, I'm going to be showing you three different ways you can remove either small, medium or complex objects from either the foreground or background of your photos using Adobe Photoshop 2020. Now again, it does depend on what type of object you'll be using. That's why I'm going to be showing you three different ways. Now, if you want to follow along to this tutorial, uh, if you go down to the, the link in the description, you'll see uh, there, it will take you to my website where you can download the images that I'll be using. Or what you can also do is follow along using the photos that you've taken. But without further ado, let's get started. Right guys, so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and load Photoshop. So I've already got it loaded up down here. And then what you want to do is you want to choose three images that you want to use either the spot healing tool, the uh, content aware fill, or using the clone tool. So if you go to the link in the description, you can choose one of the three images that I've got. Or again, guys, you can always choose images that you've taken yourself. So the first image we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the spot healing tool. Now a spot healing tool is great for very small objects. So for instance, with this image here, as you can see, it's a great image of a waterfall. But what we're going to do is you can see, we've just got this person at the bottom here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the spot healing tool to remove this person. So what we want to do is go ahead to our left hand panel here, or you can always choose J on your keyboard. What you wanna do is click and hold, and then we want to go to the spot healing brush tool. Now, with all of these tools here, they all do something very, very similar, but the spot healing tool is really, really good because it's quick and it's automatic. So what we basically do is treat it just like a brush and we want to remove the area that, of the person. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the person. So we're going to hover over. What it'll do is it'll create this gray kind of um, uh, uh, brush area appearing and that's the area that you've selected. So what we're going to do is we'll go all the way down to the uh, the kind of rock area here and just make sure the whole area is included and then click and release. And what it will do is the computer will kind of content to where fill the area out. And as you can see, it has done a really, really good job. Now you want to be doing it on areas with a fairly plain background. So it, as you can see, it's worked really nice here against this very nice kind of waterfall. So if you've got areas that you want to clean up, like for instance, if you've got some trash on the floor, as long as it's not too complicated, and as long as it's a fairly small object, the spot healing tool will work really, really well. So what we're gonna do is move over to photo two. So the photo two, what we're going to be using today is we're going to be using the content aware fill. And what we're going to do is remove the uh, kind of, uh, our, uh, this kind of um, line here where we can see there's a staircase and we want to have a nice plain background. Now I'm going to be using the content aware fill because I find it works really, really nice when you want to fill in areas of kind of flat neutral color. So as you can see, the kind of background here is a complete flat color. It's kind of like a muted white and it'll be really, it, the computer will find it really nice and easy. But with Photoshop 2020, it has become a lot smarter and is a lot more customizable. So I'm gonna show you how to use it now. So what we want to do first is we want to create uh, a selection area. So we're gonna be using the lasso tool. So if you want to go to L on your keyboard, or again, guys, it's on the left-hand side on the keyboard. What we want to do is make a nice, quick, easy selection. So we're going to remove uh, the area just at the top here. And what you want to do now is go to edit, and then you want to go down to content aware fill. And when you choose content aware fill, it comes up with three different choices now. So you've got automatic, you've got rectangular, and then you've also got custom. Now, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be choosing custom today because it's a lot more, it's a lot way of choosing the exact area that you want. Because obviously what we don't want to do is to have the, uh, the subject here, which is the, the girl in question, we don't want to copy that her hair 
all over the front. We just want to choose the background. So what we're going to do is, again, very similar to the spot healing tool, we're going to select the area that we want to copy. And what it'll do is it'll come up with this green area. Now, the more you choose, the kind of less patterny the selection will be. So we're going to choose all the area around here. We're going to go right up to the edge. Make sure we're not selecting anything we don't want. And if you do by accidentally select it, if you want to hold down Alt on your keyboard, it will remove that area from the selection. So if you want to keep on selecting the area here, along here, and it was quite nice. If you have a look on the right hand side, as you can see, it creates a small preview. So we can make sure that everything that we've got is selected correctly. And then what we can do is press OK. And as you can see, we uh, just press Command D on your keyboard to deselect it. It has removed that whole area from the photo. And as you can see, it's created a new layer. So we can see what it was before and then what it is after. And I think that's worked really, really nicely. So that's another option of how to remove objects from the background. Now, the third option, we're going to be using the clone tool. So we'll go to our third photo here. So we've got this photo here, and as you can see, this is gonna be quite a difficult thing to do, but the clone tool is perfect for this. So what we want to do is you can see these cars on the, the right-hand side here. We're going to want to remove those cars from the background. And what we're going to do is use a selection on the left-hand side and duplicate it across. Now, with the clone tool, you've got kind of a, a, kind of a secret kind of thing that not a lot of people use in it. And that is if you go to the clone presets. So if you want to go ahead over here and you want to go and select the clone tool or the clone source and you want to kind of drag it out, as you can see, you've got a bunch of different options. So you've got, uh, you can flip it horizontal, you can flip it vertical, you can change the rotation of the clone tool, and then you've got a variety of other different kind of options that you can choose. So what we're going to do today is we're going to select this and rotate it onto this selection. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure we create a new layer. So that's Command J on our keyboard or go down to the bottom and uh, duplicate the layer. And what we're going to do is choose an area over here. So we're going to go to our S, which is a uh, clone tool. Or again, we can go to the left-hand side, select the clone tool, select a nice, fairly sized brush, nice and soft. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select an area. So if we hold down Alt, and then we want to click on the area. So that's going to sample the area. And then what we're going to do is click the slip to horizontal. So we're going to flip it. So what it'll do is it'll paint but backwards. So then what we're going to do is go to the right hand side here, and then we're going to paint in the area. Now, when we do this, we want to make sure that we don't overdo it too much, but what we will do, is, as you can see, it is removing the background, or removing the cars, using the background on the left hand side and it's working so far really well okay so when we get a little bit closer what we want to do is re-click on the uh, clone source and then we want to re-choose the clone source so we've re redone it there again we're going to move down slightly we're going to make the brush slightly smaller when we get closer to the subject Now what you can also do is you can actually cut out the subjects, you can paint completely behind her. So what we're going to do now is as we get a little bit closer, what we might need to do is make a selection. So what we're going to do is go to our uh, pen tool and then we're going to make a nice quick selection just around the subject so we don't end up removing the subject from the photo. It's because we just want to replace the background. So we're going to just remove background there so I think we'll go up to about her head height maybe a little bit higher then we want to make a selection outwards so we're going to go all the way out here and then what we're going to do is probably go down to where her knee is and then just go along where the knee is brilliant so we've made a, a selection so you want to go to our path double click press enter and then you want to command click on that layer to make a selection and then we want to go back into our clone source we want to kind of select it roughly about here, and then we want to paint back in again. There we go. As you can see, it's removing it really nicely along there. And there we go. So that is how you can remove complex objects using the clone source and using your clone source presets to remove anything complicated from the background. And there we go, 
guys, I hope that was really helpful on how to remove either small, medium, or very large objects from your images using Adobe Photoshop 2020. Again guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my latest content. But until next time guys, keep creating.